Spirit's coming. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, welcome to you all. Good to see you all and uh, appreciate your presence here today. And uh, um, we've got a special Sunday. We've got some young people who will be affirming their baptism. We call it confirmation in the life of the church. And uh, they were supposed to get confirmed back on May 3rd, okay? But it seemed like we were all in shutdown at that time. And uh, so we have uh, now postponed till this day, and they're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. So this is the COVID confirmation class, all right? And we're going to have a little fun afterwards. Uh, for parents and relatives, you're welcome to stay and take pictures. We will also have somebody that will take pictures as well at no cost and so forth. We'll do a group picture. We'll do pictures with the clergy. And then also, if you want pictures with family and so forth, we encourage you in that way. The first picture will be a picture with our masks on to kind of mark this day and this time in our lives as God's people. I lift up those people that are uh, in your prayer list today in the bulletin. Please keep them in mind. Um, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, and I have a word of advice to you. When you go to bed on Halloween, turn your clocks back one hour. Okay, we fall back. It's hard to believe. Um, also, giving statements went out this week in life of the congregation. If you did not receive those via email or by mail um, and you need one, please make sure you call me or the church, call the church office. We'll be glad to take care of you. 
Also, if you've changed email addresses, that's an important thing for us to know. Um, I need to tell you that we are living in this time when it seems like things are changing very rapidly. And in light of that, we've not sent out newsletters, monthly newsletters. Instead, we are emailing and sending out what we call e-news. We'd rather send it out by email, but um, if you haven't been receiving it or don't have email, uh, please let us know. We'd love to have your email address if you have it. There's a pumpkin auction. Some of these young people have decorated pumpkins. You can find that on our uh, Facebook page uh, for Emmanuel Lutheran Church. You can bid on them. Uh, I think I even know, noticed the Franks were bidding against each other, so that was kind of fun to see. So, way to go. Good luck to whoever wins. Um, soup Kitchen is next week, and please pray for me tonight. Um, I'm sponsoring the junior high out at the alley, so I need your prayers, all right? So we have a good time. Good to have you all here. Uh, we are not singing today. Uh, as a part of the precautions with COVID. Uh, also, we will share communion with you. We will go up and down the aisles that where the cushions are up. Okay, so um, hopefully you're sitting in a pew where the cushions are down. So, and that allows the pastors to go up and down. Good to have you here. Thank you for being a part of this service. We're going to make sure the mic is working. Is it, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me now? If you can hear me now, I've got a phone service for you. Meet me in the narthex after the service. Let us stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You are treasured people of the Lord. The people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk, Talk about, about them, them when, when you are at home and when, when you are away and when you lie down and, and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by the by very word, word that, that comes, comes from the from mouth of the Lord. Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today is from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. 
Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For though the law comes the knowledge of sin, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded by what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold a person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So last Wednesday evening, I was kind of going around the tables at our Wednesday evening youth ministry, and I was talking to some of the elementary kids. And it seems like every table I went to Someone had a joke for me. Hey, Pastor Tim, do you know how the queen bee takes care of her hair? No, I don't have an idea. With a honeycomb. Ha, ha, ha. I tried another table. And at that table, a little boy said to me, Pastor Tim, do you know why the pony can't sing his favorite song? I said, I have no idea. The little boy said, because he's a little horse. <laughs> the last one, I promise. A little girl at another table said to me, where does the cow take her date for an evening? I said, where? To the movies. <laughs> I promise that would be the last one. You know, it's great to be a pastor, to go around and to visit with the young people in the life of the church, to 
have a relationship with them and uh, watch them grow in their faith and their lives as God's people. It's great to be a part of the lives of these confirmants and uh, to watch the growth that has happened over the last uh, um, two, two and a half years. So uh, today we celebrate, we rejoice with you, we appreciate the um, direction and the love and the um, faith that parents and grandparents have had a part in their confirmants' lives. So it's Reformation Sunday in the church year. And the Reformation just didn't happen a long time ago. The Reformation happens again and again and again. God is continually reforming and renewing the church, changing it. And those kids that were telling me jokes around the table, one day, one day they're going to be the leaders of the church and you've had a part in their lives. These confirmants, these confirmants, likewise, represent the future of the church. What a powerful message for us to see that Christ continues to renew and reform the church and even does it within our midst, in our lives calling us more and more to be his people in Christ and to bear witness to his love and grace in the world. You see, you and I are sent out into the world. We are called to be witnesses of God's grace, God's love, God's compassion and kindness. As God has touched us in those ways, so we get to touch others in those same ways. The confirmants had a meeting on Wednesday night. We went over some details about confirmation. One of the confirmants asked, do we get to eat cake? Unfortunately, that is a long-held tradition here, but this year we have had to not eat cake. But we went through all the details, and then what we did was parents sat down in the sanctuary here, and the young people went up, the confirmants went up to the microphone one by one and shared what we call faith statements. They're kind of a reflection on their faith journey this far. They did an incredible job. If you haven't had the chance to see them, they are on YouTube. Look up Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Hutchinson, Kansas. They are also on our Facebook page. I'm always amazed at the job that the young people do. I'm not sure I could do as good a job as you did. They talked about all kinds of things, about the people that have been a part of their lives, their faith journey, including a grandmother who makes quilts for Lutheran or with Eve. They talked about other things, about how they're involved in 4-H and other activities. They did an incredible job. Now the question is, would you do it? Would you be willing to sit down and talk about your faith journey in front of a camera and then put it over the social media? Would you be willing to share what your favorite verse was? How God has been active in your life in the past and how you see God being active in your life in the future. Who some of the people are that have impacted your faith life. I think it would be an incredible witness if adults of Emmanuel sat in front of the camera, shared their faith journey, be a great witness for the young people of Emmanuel as well. But I'm going to tell you, you do it no matter what. Realize it no matter what. As you go to work, as you go to school, as you 
are out in public, you are sharing your faith statement. You are demonstrating for the world what is important for you, your relationship with God and your relationship with others. You are treating the world with compassion and kindness and love. So whether you sit in front of a camera or whether you go to work on Monday morning or wherever and whenever you counter people, people you know and people you don't know, God goes with you. And you share your faith. It's Reformation Sunday. There's three texts for today. There are always the same texts on Reformation Sunday. The first text is from Jeremiah, where the text speaks about a new covenant that God makes with his people. That new covenant is our relationship with God and Jesus Christ. The second lesson is from Romans. It speaks about how you and I are redeemed by the blood of Christ set free, as Jesus will say in the gospel text for today. It's not what we do. It's what God in Christ has already done by way of the cross and by the way of Christ, set us free from the bondage to sin and death to live as God's people in this world. Don't forget that. Compromands, remember that. Whenever you step out into the world, when you engage people, you have an opportunity to engage them as God has engaged you. As God has cared about you, shown compassion for you, loved you, and embraced you with the presence of Christ. And the same thing happens for you, and for me, and for all of us. It's not a joke. It is the truth. Once we were no people, but now, now we are God's people. And we are called to act that way in the world. In love, in compassion, in kindness, and in grace. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may that peace keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. As I read their names, I invite them to come forward. Zachariah Mullins, Emmy Stallman, Ty Goins, Brinley Frank, Brock Ellis, Chrislyn Frank. Dear friends, we rejoice that you now desire to make public profession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you. He made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. You have been nourished at the holy table that we call communion, and you have been called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. In unison, therefore, do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil and all his promises? If so, respond, I do. Let us stand. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for those who are affirming their baptism and for all the baptized everywhere. that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be kept in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be sent into the world in witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those listed in our bulletin, all those named in our hearts, who are ill, who are in loan, who are in need of God's Spirit to give them strength, hope, and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ, through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, I ask you to respond in turn, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me.
Congregation may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Holy Spirit, you made these men and women your own. You forgive them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I ask the compromise, please kneel at this time, invite the parents to come forward. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Crislin Lee Frank the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Crislin's scripture is from the first chapter of Joshua, verse 9. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Brock Dean Ellis the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Brock's scripture is from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, verse 1. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Brindley, Ryan, Frank, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Brindley's scripture is from the 10th chapter of John, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and tie Nathaniel Gones, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Ty's scripture is 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Are you ready, Red? Yeah. After we finish, remember to say amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Emmy Marie Stallman the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. 
Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Emmy's scripture is 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now faith, hope, love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. You ready? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in Zechariah David Mullins the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering. And bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Zechariah's scripture is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I'm going to invite the parents to go back to their seats. I'm going to invite the compromands to stand up at this time. It is with great joy that we welcome you into the life of this congregation as confirmed members of Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Will you please turn around and face the music? By the way, they have gifts from the congregation and others. They have a history book of the life of the congregation. They have a Bible cover for the Bibles that they have been using in confirmation. And Pastor John Shreppel shared his book with them and wrote personal notes to all of them. So will you please give them a round of applause? And now we're going to invite them to turn back towards the altar. You may remain standing at this part. We're going to continue our worship service, which will lead us into communion. Today, as we celebrate the Lord's Sacrament, as we come into the congregation, we will be communing with bread only, believing that Jesus is truly present in even just the bread of communion. We ask you to hold out your hands if you wish to receive the communion. Um, and we will drop it into your hands. And uh, if not, if you would rather not receive it, just have your hands folded and we will give you a blessing. So we will get to that part of the service in just a moment. We'll continue with the confession. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.